The South Atlantic rarely offers an easy rehearsal space, and that is precisely why the British Army chose it. Over two intensive days in the Falkland Islands, the garrison at Mount Pleasant used Sawbone Blue Bear's aerial target system to push Sky Saber's training profile beyond routine drills, flying a handful of demanding sorties that stressed the chain from first detection to decisive engagement. The weather cooperated in the way it often does down there, by turning disagreeable, forcing air defenders and their Royal Air Force partners to maintain timing discipline, manage bandwidth, and make clean decisions against a moving problem in a region where support is distant and mistakes are costly. The headline is simple, but the implications are not, extending the target profiles out to sea nearly doubled the system's typical reach and exposed frictions that only appear when you lengthen the geometry and compress the clock at the same time. At the heart of the British land-based shield is Sky Saber, a system designed from the start as a triad of complementary functions, a fast refresh surveillance radar, a battle management node that treats data as a weapon, and an effector capable of agile engagements without advertising itself on launch. The effector in question is the CAMM family, which uses a vertical cold launch method and an active radar seeker to remove many of the mechanical delays and guidance dependencies that limited legacy short-range defenses. Fired vertically, CMM can pivot quickly into the required intercept basket, a trait that matters when a target appears at an awkward bearing or when multiple tracks must be serviced in rapid succession. The missile's low-launch signature profile is tactically useful in a world where every emission is observed and recorded. The sensing layer is anchored by Saab's Giraffe AMB, a 3D C-band radar prized by expeditionary units for its one-second revisit rate and robustness in the cluttered physics of coastal airspace. In the South Atlantic, where maritime ducting, spray, and hard winds can degrade lesser sensors, a mast-mounted antenna and smart processing keep small or low-flying objects from slipping below the horizon of attention. More important than any single specification is how quickly the radar can offer engagement quality tracks to the command node without forcing the battery to plant itself. The point of Sky Saber is mobility coupled to knowledge, move, rebuild the air picture, maintain control even under emissions discipline, and still shoot on time. Blue Bear's contribution turned a local shoot into a systems test. The company brought not only air targets but the specialists to reconfigure envelopes on the fly. Pushing sorties far offshore and across more than 500 kilometers of cumulative tracks imposed real-world penalties on data links and procedures. When you stretch the baseline, latency and line of sight become characters in the script, not footnotes. That is where training earns its keep. Operators had to maintain a recognized maritime-slash-common operational picture that did not collapse into duplicates or stale data, while still compressing the detect-classify-decide-engage cycle to a rhythm that survives contact with wind, salt, and imperfect geometry. Connectivity made the event genuinely joint. Link 16 allowed the island Sky Saber Detachment to ingest and disseminate tracks with RAF Typhoons and Royal Navy nodes, keeping a shared view of the battle space intact without continuous high-power transmissions. That matters under emissions control, when the demand to preserve signatures collides with the obligation to remain lethal. The exercise rehearsed exactly that balancing act. You do not broadcast more than necessary, you also do not lose the thread. The right shooter, right target, right moment mantra only works if the network carries clean, timely updates and the command node resists the temptation to micromanage. In this rehearsal the pairing logic was the point, not an accessory. The Falkland setting adds an operational twist that home station ranges cannot replicate. It is one thing to drill on a temperate field with maintenance crews and spare kits minutes away, it is another to validate that a compact garrison can move, reconnect, rebuild the air picture, and fire in bad weather with resupply chains measured in oceanic distances. By pushing a target system beyond its routine radius, instructors force the detachment to experience the frictions of long-haul coordination, intermittent line of sight, and tempo in a place where improvisation is a requirement, not a luxury. That is not showmanship, it is risk management. You uncover the weak joints in a controlled environment before an adversary manipulates them. 
the tactical takeaways are concrete. First, high-refresh 3D surveillance with intelligent mast placement remains the bedrock of ground-based air defense against small, fast, and low targets. Second, active seeker missiles with vertical cold launch expand engagement geometry, shorten decision time, and reduce the electromagnetic footprint at the worst possible moment for the attacker. Third, modern GBAD lives or dies on data hygiene, if Link 16 feeds a cluttered or lagging picture, the slickest effector does not save the engagement. KOP Shield's discipline on timeline management and track stewardship was not a checklist item, it was the exercise. Strategically, the deployment points to how the United Kingdom intends to employ air defense as a layered, networked enterprise tied into NATO architectures rather than as a standalone island. A small, professional detachment can matter a great deal if it can see, be seen, and coordinate without drowning in its own emissions. The presence of typhoons provides a second interception layer and a sanity check on joint tactics, techniques, and procedures. It also creates options. When the battery's geometry is suboptimal or emissions constraints bite, a fighter with the same picture can prosecute, and vice versa. That interplay is what Dieter's miscalculation more than slogans do. There is an industrial subtext as well. For Blue Bear and Saab, extending target profiles is not a cosmetic metric to tout in brochures, it is the fastest way to surface vulnerabilities in sensors, data links, and human procedures. Demonstrating that the target system can be reconfigured and stretched in austere conditions amounts to a proof of relevance, and it aligns with the broader European effort to sustain a competitive defense technological and industrial base. For the Army 7 Air Defense Group and its counter, uncrewed aerial system training team, the value is muscle memory, build the picture early, share it cleanly, and assign the shot without hesitating, especially when the scenario is untidy. Deterrence in the South Atlantic is inherently pragmatic. The political temperature around the islands rises and falls, but the geographic facts do not change, and distance is a permanent constraint. A garrison that can plug into allied networks, ride out poor weather, and execute with measured emissions sends a sharper message than ornate statements do. Training with credible surrogate threats, pushed to uncomfortable ranges, communicates competence without pageantry. It says that the defenders have tested the plumbing, not just the posters. There is no single revelation in this exercise, and that is precisely its strength. KOP Shield stitched together known components, fast radar refresh, agile missiles, a disciplined network, under conditions that punish complacency and expose sloppy habits. The outcome is a more confident crew, a validated command and control rhythm, and a better understanding of where the edges truly are. If there is a lesson to export beyond the South Atlantic, it is that the hard problems sit at the intersection of physics, software, and human timing. Stretch the distance, shorten the clock, and see what breaks, then fix it before someone else makes it break for you. In the end, the measure of success is whether a small force can protect a large strategic narrative, the assurance that a distant but important outpost is not a soft target. By compressing timelines, enforcing electromagnetic discipline, and letting joint connectivity do its quiet work, the British Army and its partners demonstrated that Sky Sabre is not just a collection of subsystems but a coherent defense. The South Atlantic will keep being a difficult classroom. That is fine. Difficult classrooms produce the kind of reliability that matters on the worst day, and exercises like this one steadily turn equipment lists into deterrence you can actually believe.